Welcome to the Busy Guy Show. My name is Vince Lacasio and I'm a busy guy. I have two busy people here today, Nikki Braden and Mike Preston. Uh, they're both stand-up comedians. Among other things, they do stand-up at Zany's Comedy Clubs. Welcome to the show. Nikki. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to have you here. Thanks for having Mike, us, Vince. Thanks for being here. Be here. I've been dying to ask you guys both those questions. Uh, what are you, a comedian? <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> Let's start off with Nikki. Um, it's something that sounds like you said that it's something you want to do your whole life, and just a little bit to get started about you. You studied at Second City? I did. Um, I did the entire um, program at Second City, the conservatory, which is where Tina Fey and all these wonderful rich people come from. So I did that for a while, and then I, after that, I did a show called The Davenports. We went for a year at the Playground Theater. And that kind of thing, and then that ran out, and then I was like, "Well, what else can I do?" And I started stand up. And it's some improv. That the Davenport thing was, was improv, uh, some yes. improv. Mm -hmm. And Michael, you've been at it for quite some time. A long time. I think I started in '89, and the, the, there was a comedy club on every corner back then. You could uh, work in Chicago. You could work all, you know, just about every week without leaving town. You know, there's the improv. There were two Funny Bones, uh, you know, three Zanies, and uh, assorted little one nighters all over the place. So. There was a lot more going on back then. We didn't know it was a boom and that it was going to be over soon. <laughs> yeah. But the strong ones are still standing. I mean, Zanies is the uh, the heartbeat of it all, right? Yeah. There's downtown Chicago, or downtown Rosemont and um, St. Charles. St. Charles. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit about it, just so you know, so people that are watching, obviously your show's fantastic. I should I'll go ahead and say both of you for Thank that. You. I had the Thanks. pleasure to see it. Thank you. And uh, just tell us a little bit about how, you know, especially for yourself, to say, you know, somebody could be, hey, you're funny with your friends and stuff, but how different is it being up on stage? It's very different. It's, it's an artificial environment, for one thing. You know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's not a natural conversation. You have to make it a natural conversation with the audience. You know, pretty, pretty much a one-way conversation. You don't want them interacting too much, but it's not like sitting here talking with you. You know, mm -hmm. it really is a presentation, you know, and you better be prepared. As, and you know, I, I think like a lot of people are funny, and they're funny with their friends and their family. And like you said, it is a controlled environment. But a lot of times, you if you try to take what you said at your family picnic and put it on stage, it doesn't translate well because first mm -hmm. of all, people don't know your family; they don't yeah. know the situation and what you know. So it doesn't work. It's very difficult to be funny in front of it's strangers too. Mm -hmm. They yeah. don't like you sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How can somebody not like you? I don't, it's difficult. Well, maybe yeah. they had a bad day. You, know? yeah. they, they, you got to deal with whatever they came mm -hmm. in the door with, too. You know, I mean, we, I did a show Saturday night for uh, a crowd of people that had been drinking since four o'clock in the afternoon, and this was the late show was like nine forty-five. So they were in a good mood, but it's that whole thing of dealing with a drunk where they can be in a good mood one minute and you know have you up against the wall the next minute. So you, it's a fine line. So. And turn on you. Yeah. Um, on, on that question, I had I had the good pleasure of having Dolby Maxwell and Bill Gargo, who actually teach comedy I at Zanies. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Dolby? I love you, you hear that, Bill? Uncle Dolby. Mr. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, no but what they shared with me is they, you know, people come to them and say, "Can you teach me to be funny?" I, that can't be done, right? Cannot. Uh, you have to have some natural talent or ability. You can fine tune it and you can learn things like stage present and joke structure and that kind of thing, but to be funny either, I, do you agree? You have pretty to much, just. Pretty much. Pretty much. I mean, there, there are formulas. I, I know I, and I've seen comics, uh, the formula, uh, have you seen this? Fill in blank, blank, blank. And I'm thinking, fill in blank, blank, blank. So you can, you know, pattern yourself. It, it doesn't work for me and it's probably not going to work for a lot of audience, but you can attempt it. You can simulate a comic, but. Uh, who knows what that magic element is, and if it's missing, good luck. It's why it's chemistry, I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. got to work. Yeah. And you, uh, everybody's show is different, but you're drawing. You're, you draw from experience, just life. Sure. Your mom, your wife, your family. Yes. Um, I, I, I do. I think because comedy is comes from honesty. Like mm -hmm. you have to be real, and you have to. I think the more that you talk about what you know and it's real to you, it becomes real to the audience, and you convey that, and they can relate to that, instead of talking about something that I have no idea about, and I just think it's funny. So I try to stick to things that I know, and it's true to me, and then it comes over, it conveys with the audience, and they connect with it, so that works for me. Yeah, it's kind of like breaking the tension, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that the more tense <laughs> yeah. somebody is, I, and I learned this, I think, from Dovey and, and Bill, but the more tense somebody is, the more you can, the harder they're gonna laugh. 
I'm also a wife and mother, but a lot of that took place in prison, so I don't like to talk about it. It's not funny to me yet. And you, you dropped from what? You, social, you were a social worker? I, I was not a degreed social worker. I have a number of years in social work experience, uh, and, and uh, I draw on that because you, you better laugh or you're going to cry. It's, you know, I, I've done work with homeless, with developmentally disabled, with the mentally ill, and I'm not making fun of them, just in case anybody wonders. <laughs> uh, but, you know, my own experience in, you know, in being in that situation is often amusing to me and sometimes to the audience. So. Yeah, it's that tension thing, you know. I yeah, mean, it's yeah. Just letting people relax yeah. and laugh a little bit about things they're always nervous about. Right, and, and I mean the whole blanket diagnosis of mental illness is very few people who aren't diagnosed these days. Yeah. So it's uh, well, the one, what is it? The ones that say they're not crazy are the ones that are crazy. There you go. <laughs> I think go. I got it right because yeah. I'm crazy. <laughs> And uh, if you want to touch briefly about how you handle hecklers, I know you've been doing it a little longer. I don't know, you know if you've experienced it I've yet. I've never been heckled yet. I've really? Yet. Never. Really? Oh, never, man. ever. Good I've for never you. been heckled. I got a guy. On something. <laughs> you know somebody? I got a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, That's you know, why I can't speak on that. I've never been heckled. Yeah, I, you know, I, you know I, I, depending on my mood, it depends on how I handle it, but I've seen other guys handle it. And I like when they give them enough rope. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a guy, uh, Matt Berry, who used to, you know, send me shots sometimes. I said, what'd you say? And then they'd repeat it. And he'd say, Sorry, didn't hear you. And as they keep repeating it, you know, making more and more of an ass out yeah. of themselves, you know, it, it gradually becomes apparent to them that, you know, they were not helping the show. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, you guys are getting paid to be up there. And, and people came... To see, see you, that, they don't want to see mm -hmm. a heckler. I right. think people, they think that it's such a fun thing to do because mm -hmm. I think they want to participate. They want mm -hmm. to be a part of the show and they don't understand like how disturbing it is because first of all, you have a timing. Mm -hmm. So you have your jokes and you perfected your timing and your punchline and somebody mm -hmm. yells out and then you have to throw it off and it's like, do I talk to this person or now do I try to pick up my pace of where I was? And it's, it just throws everything off. So I hope it never happens because it's yeah. terrible. It's absolutely terrible. I'll tell you, just being there, uh, like beside, obviously besides laughing my ass off, <laughs> you gain a lot of respect for you because I, I see how you walk through things. It's just, uh, you know, cocktail waitresses are dropping something or people are talking in the back. Uh, it's truly, truly an art that I, you know, I gain a lot more respect for when, when you see it live. Um, I know there's some sensitive issues and some of them become the funniest ones, like sex, race, or religion, I right now. But how do both of you handle that? And is there a fine line when you cross it and when you don't cross it? This is what I do. I no longer invite friends or family to my show because I said a joke. No, literally, I have a family member who stopped talking to me in July over a joke that they thought that I wrote intentionally about them uh -oh. because they fell under that umbrella, you know, uh -oh. like, and they do not speak to me right now. So I just stopped all friends and family from coming and then everybody else can bite me. <laughs> so, You're saying so, I could alienate family members you can through humor? Yes. Hmm. Give me I, a pencil. I was, that was one less Christmas <laughs> gift to buy. I'm like, right. like it was. It was like perfect for me. I'm like awesome, but absolutely. Yeah. So that's the one thing that I don't do. So yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, it's personal experience. Mm -hmm. What's uh, you know, I'm talking about my life. You know, like I do stuff about being growing up Catholic. You know, which you know. Which I can relate. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I'm not making this stuff up. That right. the nuns used to beat us. The stuff that teachers get arrested for these days. Our parents That's were slipping right, them a few bucks Holy extra. Water. They go, here, whack him again. We're enjoying it. But um, I did uh, have a situation where after a show one night, uh, again, it's always a drunk woman, comes up, yeah, yeah, how come you're making fun of Catholics? How come you're not making fun of Jews? I'm like, well, I wasn't raised Jewish. That's why. I'm talking about my own experience. But, again, you can't waste a lot of time talking to a drunk person, you, you know, whether they're heckling or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it, Nip it in the butt and move on. You know, so. Come down to their level. Right. Uh, what about uh, swearing? Is there a time to do it? Is there a time not to do it? All day, every day. <laughs> right, Nikki? <laughs> I don't swear, and it's not because I'm like holy or I go to church. I, it's not. Oh my God, whatever. I, <laughs> I thought you were holy. I, you, did you yeah. think oh, that? Yeah. No, Sister it's Nikki. not like I'm pristine. When the cameras stop rolling, I will curse, but I just don't do it on stage, and I made it a conscious choice from Second City. Because when we would do improv, when people would feel like they were tanking, and they weren't, they would just start cursing and swearing, and they would pull out cocaine, and they would like try to shock the audience into mm -hmm. laughing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me see if I can get through this without cursing, unless it's absolutely necessary for my character. So mm -hmm. I just didn't do it to see if I was really funny or not. And then when I started doing stand-up, I was just, it was just a habit. I just didn't do it. 
I want to, but now she's right. It, it is right. it is the easy way. I mean, dirtier is easier. I mean, it uh, you know, it, uh, most audiences. You, if you uh, hit a sixth grade level of humor, you know, with fart and yes, sex yes, jokes, yes. you can travel coast to coast. <laughs> yes. You know, but is that really what you want to do? I mean, where's the challenge in that? You know, and the same thing with swearing. I mean, I, I'm not certainly not offended by it, but I, I like when it's used, uh, you know, sparingly, right. you know, mm -hmm. so that it retains some of its shock value or whatever if you keep saying it over and over and over it's like okay you're just unimaginative you know exactly yeah. you have nothing else to say that's how mm -hmm. i think you right now and that's how i live my personal life so <laughs> i really like to be a little different on stage plus it gives you an opportunity if you're playing to a senior citizens group that's not going to want to hurt a corporate that says you know i don't want any swearing and if your whole routine was swearing you're mm -hmm. i've seen comics trouble. eat it because they're so used to swearing and mm -hmm. when they were in an environment that they couldn't they ate it because mm -hmm. they didn't know how to fill it in and they were just so used to doing that. So. Which as a comic is enjoyable to watch. Dobie <laughs> talks about that. There's yeah. nothing a comic enjoys more than watching another comic take it in the shorts. It really is. It's, uh, that is yeah, so I've evil, seen, but it is. It's, it's, well, I mean, so I've seen bad. enough good comedy. I like to see somebody die. <laughs> it's just fun. Well, when we started, I talked about other things that you do. And Mike, I know you are a busy guy. You're an author. You do stand-up at TV Produce producer and um, tell me a little about your show Cycle Babble so, TV. I, well yeah I've been doing a cable show so my hat's off to you. It's, it's a little weird being in this seat because I'm used to sitting back there and barking orders at people but I, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> dance monkeys dance! <laughs> um, but I've been doing Psycho Babble since 2002 um, and uh, it's it's a parody of a talk show. It's like I don't know if you remember the old Fernwood Tonight with uh, Mark Mull and Fred Willard, where they you know it was just a little you well, know that was a spin off from from Mary Hartman. Right, Mary Hartman, right, Mary right. Mary Hartman. But the talk show they would have you know you it, it was a freak. <laughs> yeah, you kids. <laughs> Yeah. Teach you how to swear and watch TV <laughs> later. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's comedic actors portraying eccentric guests is what, really what it was a lot. You know, they had, uh, who was the guy who played Ernest was on there all the time. Uh, uh, Vern, you know what I mean, Vern, that guy? Not Ernest E. Bass. No, no, Ernest. Oh, then uh, I do know. Ernest Goes to Hollywood. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that yeah, guy. See, he I used to TV. do a character who was a mechanic. And uh, he was also a daredevil. I remember on one of their episodes, he was going to jump a bunch of motorcycles in a motorhome. <laughs> you know, so it was just nuts. Um, and so our show is that. I mean, I, I've been doing comedy for a number of years, and I have a lot of very talented comic friends who also do characters. So it's a venue to do something other than stand-up, where they can come on and do a little improv or sing or dance badly or you know as long as they're doing it badly they're welcome on our show but uh yeah so we do that and we intermix it uh we also go out and uh, interview whatever celebrities will talk to us and we and we've gotten lucky with that we've had we've had a you truly have i yeah. mean there's people from um ralph Mickey nader rooney ralph <laughs> nader <laughs> Uh, Mike Ditka. Jethro Tull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's also an opportunity for me to pursue. I mean, I'm a rock and roll geek, and I, I've, through Psycho Babble, I've been able to meet and interview a lot of my uh, childhood idols, as it were, you know, and uh, you know, talk to them. So it's, it's a lot of fun, that. But just, we just try to keep the plates spinning, you know. So. Well, it's really encouraging to hear that uh, public access is like showing home movies in your. Closet. It's for, <laughs> nice. only, not as big an audience. Nice. <laughs> so and this is public access. By yes, the way. it is. Yes, it is. It's uh, yeah. Well, and th that's another thing we do is we uh, we on occasion frequently interview uh, porn stars and strippers and have them on because uh, what's a porn what? star? Well. When a man and a woman love each other very much, Biology the man gives it. the woman drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, no, anyway, uh, but you know the, the whole thing of uh, nobody tunes into public access on purpose. So uh, when we first went on the air, we were on at the same same time slot as Howard Stern, and somebody said, you know, he's got all kinds of hot chicks over on his channel. Why would somebody watch your show? So we threw a little bait out in the water there. So if somebody's channel surfing, they'll go. So What's the chicken in the bikini doing? Yeah. So misogynistic. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I want to talk to you about I'm that over later, it. too. Over it. That's an expensive word. <laughs> if you man. can learn to swear, we can use well, wait, you. If you can swear wear a did bikini, you, uh, <laughs> you might be a yeah. business lady. Did you bring a clip? You know, I think I did bring a clip. I don't know what I Which did one with it. Which one did you bring? Uh, do we have the clip? Yeah, this is me and Daryl Hannah making out. <laughs> no, it's uh, Daryl Hammond. We got the clip? Out. Oh, we do. Oh, we do have a clip. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I wonder what's on it. We have a box of clips in the back. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Psychobabble. You can sell crazy someplace else. We're all stocked up here. 
You make me feel like dancing. You make me feel like dancing. Um, what, uh, who's the hotties checking us out? I think that might be my wife. <laughs> oh, get, no, it's not. Yeah. It is not. Oh, yeah. We get that on tape. <laughs> oh, my <Man>. God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Almost didn't make it to the show. Got into my car, and it wouldn't start right away. And as I sat there, I thought to myself, wonder what it'd be like for some famous celebrities if their car didn't start. Like Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, I just have uh, been handed some very fascinating news. You know, uh, this holiday coming up, I, I just found that our old friend uh, Mitt Romney uh, is going to be uh, going hiking. Did you know about this? No, no. Yeah, he's taking a two-day hike uh, up to see his uh, pile of money. So. <laughs> <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't introduce my new nurse here. This is uh, our new nurse. You remember our old nurse? We had our old yes. nurse here, and unfortunately, she died in a tragic parachuting accident, and so she's no longer with us. Yes, and then, then she was eaten by squirrels, I think. Yeah, and a band of rabbit squirrels. It was really sad. Yeah. You heard about that. Yeah, not not rabbits. Uh, it's rabbit squirrels. These they were a mixed breed of squirrels with long ears that hopped. It was, uh, and that's when they turned dangerous. <laughs> As I walk on the street, started to rain. I stepped in some dog dew from a big old Great Dane. That's when I thought how lucky it was not to be wearing no shoes. I wrote a song for your next CD. Yes. It's called She Was Only a Steelworker's Daughter, But You Should See That Pig Iron. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of times I'll have a, I'll just fill up one big syringe with, uh, with a bunch of stuff. And then I can get as many people as I can. Kind of a community shot. Exactly. Same needle? Same needle. We're talking Muddy and all the names. You've played with everyone. Eric Clapton, B.B. Uh, King. Uh, anyone on that list that you haven't played with that you would still like to? Have? Barry Manilow, anybody? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would. I would like to play with Barry. Would you ever take me? No, I just got to take the play. Uh. Well, what about Wally? Wally, you uh, doing anything? Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with Wally. Last time I saw him, he was assistant manager at the Burger King on Route 12. Oh, okay. Hi, this is Adrian Curry, and you are watching Psycho Babble TV. Keep on watching. It gets weirder and weirder. We'll see ya. Ah, we ready with that clip yet? <laughs> As Carson, you say, ah, that's funny stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, it's just nuts, and that's you know, just kind of it's what we do. It's something else, the, the range of the characters and yeah, stuff that you have, and the guests. We have fun. We have fun. Uh, something we talked about that's it's needed in, like, every industry, but and I know with this one is, as well, is now with the Internet and being tech-savvy and all that. Yeah, um, which I'm not. What do we feel here? I'm How can you be young and not be tech savvy? You know what? This is the bane of my existence. Yeah. I practice so much on cursing and not cursing and being wholesome and not being a stripper that I have totally lost my savvy for the internet and Twitter and Facebook. I'm working on my website and I'm doing it myself because that's just how I like to work and function. So I'm trying to do it myself, and it's just a pain, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to master it. But it is out there. Now there's yes. uh, NikkiBraden.com. Yes, it is. Nikki on Facebook. Mm -hmm. and so Facebook, Nikki Braden. You can Facebook and Twitter. Twitter. Nikki Braden, same thing. Yes. And our, our website is PsychobabbleTV.com. Got to put the TV in there. Otherwise, you get a rave party out in New Mexico. But it's <laughs> PsychobabbleTV.com. Well, Nick, it being, and you told me it's not even a year yet, right? It has not been a year. I started um, at Zany's July of 2012, so not a full year. I salute you. I mean, Thank you've you. opened up for some big names, Chelsea uh, Handler and Sarah, uh, Sarah Colonna. Colonna. from the Chelsea Handler Show. Not Chelsea herself, but Sarah, um, Sarah Colonna and Dob Davidoff. Both of those guys are from that show. And Mike Palisak, a few of these, this guy over here. So I'm making my rounds. <laughs> <laughs> and I... Uh, so I don't think I mentioned already, but you also MC as well. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm a host. Um, I was asked to host, so that was fun. That was a lot of mm -hmm. fun. To, Which is a whole other skill it in is. itself. It's different than just going up and doing your act. You have to start things off. You have to keep uh, the pace, address to, the crowd, yes. yeah, and, and bring up the other acts. So it's it's a skill. Good one um, to have. 
something else that you were in, uh, it's called Six to See? Yeah, so I was Six to See. It was the six comedians to see before they become stars. Um, I was in that little entourage of very, very funny comics. So I've been involved in some good things. Zanies has been very, very good to me. So I'm going to be in the Six to See before they're dead very <laughs> shortly. So. Or the Six We Saw. Yeah, Six We Saw. <laughs> what was that subtitled? <laughs> And you have any uh, idols that you look up to? I, or I like them all. I like Chris Rock and Eddie Murphy, Ellen DeGeneres. I love. I'm becoming a Louis C.K. fan. Oddly enough, he is funny. Yeah, he is very funny. So I run the gamut of comics. You could say Mike Preston too. Mike Preston. I'm think a big Nikki guy. Braden fan. That's all <laughs> I, I watch it. is Nikki videos day love and it. night. <laughs> love it. Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. If she learns to swear. Boom to the I'm moon. I'm in there. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, though, Mike? I mean, is there was people you looked uh, up to? Yeah, yeah you, you know, I like do? the weirder ones. You know, you saw Gilbert in that clip, Gilbert Gottfried. He, I really like the bizarre stuff where you have no idea where that came from, and that's Gilbert in a nutshell. I mean, he's, and he could fit in a nutshell, but he, he's crazy. I, 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 Stephen Wright was one of my favorites starting out. Uh, I like Bill Maher a lot. You know, he says things like, nobody I else love, will say, yes, you I know. Like so, yeah, I like the intelligent stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Larry the Cable Guy, but it, it's just not my thing, you know. It's just, uh, I don't know. I like drier, more cerebral. I don't know. Nice. Well, um, and, I, and when, I don't know when you have all this time to write books, too. Well, in lieu of having a job, which that should end very shortly, <laughs> I've had, had health insurance for 20 years. Ah, I'm going to quit writing books and get me a job, you know. So, yeah, I, I self-published books. I uh, The first one uh, was called The Moron Chronicles, and it was really written as an alternative to homicide. Because I, I had a guy that was uh, <laughs> renting a room from me, and really... <laughs> I just thought day and night about putting my hands around his throat and making the world a better place. And then I thought, well, you know, I don't really want to go to prison. I mean, I like the fellows, but I don't want to live with them. Uh, so I, I started, thinking, what's going on in his head? And I started writing it down in diary form and found it very entertaining to the point where I would actually seek out my roommate and ask him questions. What did you do then? And write it down. <laughs> and uh, so, I, yeah, I, uh, it was originally one massive volume that I split it into parts one and two, The Moron Chronicles, available on Amazon.com. Um, but, uh, yeah, I wrote that one. And then uh, Sway uh, was one I wrote when I lived out in Los Angeles, and it's kind of a parody of a Stephen uh, King thing. And, and then the other ones are just parodies of self-help books. And, you know, that's my background in uh, social work, you know, I see these guys like Dr. Phil and all these gurus and stuff, and it's like, eh, it's pretty simple stuff. I think anybody could make it funny. So yeah. I wrote Stop Talking Now, uh, So You're a Stinking Drunk, Love, Get Over It, that sort of thing. So. Well, I would be totally missed if I didn't um, thank Cindy Wilson, the general manager of Rose. Nelson. Uh, Nelson. That's why I said Nelson. Pay attention. Okay. No, I, I did say Wilson. Cindy Nelson. Cindy Nelson. Um, for helping me meet you guys, and um, you know, Cindy's a rarity well, in the in the comedy club world. I mean, the, the, most comedy club managers are not nice, friendly people like Cindy. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. she doesn't do stand up, but she's uh, she's, funny. she's been around it long enough oh, to yeah. know that she oh, yeah. uh, she's got she the, knows her business. Yeah, great lady, yeah. great lady. Um, well, for the both of you, what do you see for future plans? Or what um, would you like to see? I'm going to be a rich and famous rock star, so I'm glad you grabbed me now. Also, music. I am glad, too. <laughs> I'm real glad I grabbed you now. I'm done with this comedy nonsense. I'm just going to be a rock star. You're on your way. <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, manage Nikki's fan club like uh, that chick who handled Selena. And it's going to end badly. <laughs> it's <laughs> That's what it's I not going to work out for <laughs> yeah, me. That's her, or me, probably. <laughs> Can the busy guy show be like, part of the movie? Oh, absolutely. sure, absolutely. absolutely. You're the one who got the ball rolling. Yep. Who's going to play me, though? Who's going to play you? The people ask that question. Who would you want to play you on Are TV? you kidding me? Do, you, do I need to run? This has nothing to do with our subject today. No, absolutely not. But are you kidding me? Let's take a guess. We can just start with, all right, Tyra Banks. Let's do a little Halle Berry, throw her in there. Like, anything you want, mm. you think, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm seeing it. <laughs> I'm seeing it. Scooby-Doo could play me, I think. <laughs> I was thinking Denzel for me. Were you thinking yeah. that? I, I, was, I get yeah. that a lot. Adjust that yeah. color again. <laughs> um, well, what about this? What about advice for, hey, I want to be a comic when I grow up, seriously, and somebody wants to do that, what would you say to them? 
I, I, I would say don't take advice. I mean, the, the yeah. guys who are the groundbreakers, like, you know, you think Richard Pryor, Sam Kinison, uh, you know, Lenny Bruce, th those are the guys who, you know, broke the mold and uh, did things people told them not to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I don't think it's good for comics to take advice. It's, it's not American freaking idol, for God's sakes. Don't get a stylist. Yeah, there's don't, no one way. Yeah, 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 just, but be funny. I mean, you know, yeah. they, 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 if that's advice, you know, try and be funny, you know, so. You guys must feel pretty cool. I mean, you get on the stage and you know that those people, some of those names you just mentioned, um, were in the same spot there. They were, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I got a double dose with Second City. You walk through there, there's all kind of handprints and stuff. It's so nostalgic, it really is. So, like, those people were once there. I have a shot at this, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I want to thank you both for being on the Thank's show. Thank you. Uh, I have some cannolis for you. That's the nice. tradition here. Cannolis, wow. He gets his own box? Oh, Are yeah. Wow. Want right. a box? No, but I'll wrestle. <laughs> Hello. Um, Thank you so much. So, for information about Nikki, we're going to NikkiBraden.com. Yes, we will. Also, Facebook. Twitter. And Don't Twitter. Twitter. That's right. I'm a Twitter on my father's side. No, <laughs> what was it. And um, you can find out stuff about me on NikkiBraden.com. <laughs> Fan club. Yeah. Fan club yeah. president. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And, uh, and also on uh, Mike, you got Psychobabble TV. Psychobabble TV .com. I'm also on Facebook. I don't know what the I, I can't remember. It's Mike Preston or something on Facebook. But Facebook is starting to creep me out a little. There's a little too much info. People are a little too emotionally invested in Facebook. It's not yeah. your therapist's office. It's a social <laughs> network. If if you're feeling down, suicidal, maybe considering ending it all, uh, go see a professional. Don't post it on there and see who likes it. You How about know? people arguing about what they post it on? Right. It's yeah. ridiculous. Did you get a call? Yeah. I'm a busy guy. Are you yeah. kidding me? A lot of Hello? shows they turn the phones off during the table. Yeah, I'm a busy guy. That's why it's called that. Yeah. No. no, seriously. I mean, no, but seriously, it really. takes a phone call. You have a cannoli? Right. I'm going to talk on the phone. That's, that'll be the no, new title of the show. No, you can't talk to them. They're the guests. No. They could. Somebody There's another person that wants to be on the show. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I, I'll have to get You get to cannolis. You, you want to talk to them? No, 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 I can't. I can't. It's not in my contract. You want to talk to them? No, no, I'm good. Right. Neither one of them wants to talk to you. So. My manager won't allow You'll be on the that's show. That's right. That's right. Nikki can't talk. Don't okay. make eye contact right. with Nikki, you people at home. Yeah. Goodbye. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm, I really am supposed to be at the meeting with this person. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to leave. Uh, Us? You guys have been on the stage before, so I think yeah. uh, maybe you could finish it up. But, sure. But I, I mean, I hope you don't think it's rude, but i got to go. It's your show, dude. You do whatever Welcome. you want. I know. Huh? Thank you very much. Thanks All right. for having us, Vince. My pleasure. Thank you. It was a lot of fun up and, until uh, now. Send postcards. Yeah. He's really uh, leaving. I think he is leaving. Yeah. I'm busy. He told me he was a busy guy. I didn't realize.